Welcome back everybody. This is the Tesla Model S 75D and today we're going to be checking out the tech inside of it and what makes it such an advanced car. And a huge shout out to Ben who provided this car to make this video. Uh, his Instagram handle is on screen right now. But yeah, without any further ado, let's check out the tech. So we're gonna start with the key because it's kind of the natural first step. Uh, there's actually a lot of tech inside of the key. So when the car is locked and you go up to the car with the key in your pocket, the door handles will auto present themselves and come out of the recessed mode so you can then pull it and open the door. And there's also a couple other things with the key. So you can open the trunk with two uh, presses of the back of the key where the trunk is because it's shaped like the car like that. And then you can press the front of it twice and open up the front or the front trunk. However, with the front trunk, you do need to manually lift it um, due to just like automobile restrictions. And probably the coolest feature of the key is the summoning feature. So if you hold the top of the key, you wait a little bit until the uh, lights start flashing yellow. And then you press the front of the key. There's no one in it there's no one in that car. And then you can press it again to stop. There's even a lot of tech in the headlights and taillights. So in the headlights themselves, you have the uh, diffused outer headlight, you have the turn signal on the edge. On the inside of it, you have a set of LED headlights that are for turning, so when you turn, it automatically lights up where you're turning to. And then it has the main headlight itself, and they look really cool. So the taillights don't have quite as much going on as the headlights do, but you can see they are LED taillights on either side. And then the brake light is this bar on top as well, which is a really cool kind of accent uh, way of showing a brake light. All right, and one of the last things I want to check out on the outside of the car is all of the sensors. So they have a lot of cameras for the autopilot functionality, as well as ultrasonic and radar sensors that uh, give it a lot of data to work with. So you can see some of the ultrasonic sensors down here. These are used for parking assist. Uh, and as we go across the car, there are really just cameras everywhere. So we have a camera in the side right here. We move forward a little bit. We have a camera right here. And this whole unit also serves as the blinker. So it's kind of just a dual functionality there. Looks really cool. Uh, up top on the windshield, you're not gonna be able to see it too well, is a set of three cameras placed at different angles. So they see different areas uh, of the road in front of them and get as much data and information as possible. Around front, we have more of those ultrasonic sensors and radar behind there as well. To get more data, again, the more data the better because it is able to drive itself, which is just absolutely insane. And then it's the same thing on this side, it's just the same uh, camera locations and whatnot. And finally, that brings us over here to a little bit of different top topic, but this is where the charging port is. So when you have the key in your pocket and you're close to it, you can just tap that opens up and the light goes on and that's where you plug it in to start charging uh, and there are a bunch of adapters and stuff to use different types of ports. So here's actually the charging cables and stuff that you use to charge it. So this is what goes into uh, the actual port. That's why it looks all nice and stuff. Has a button right here so when it's plugged into the wall, this button will actually open up the charging port so you can then just go and plug it in. This is the really big plug-in unit uh, and then there's also adapters and stuff if you're using a smaller one uh, to make it work no matter what. Now let's hop inside the car and see what's going on in there. So we're now inside of the car. The first thing I want to mention is that there's no on button. So you get in with the keys and then once you hit the brake button, the car is just on and you can start moving. Then when you get out and you get about 20 feet away from the car, it will then turn off and it will lock everything up and it will be off essentially. Uh, and then we're working with two displays in the Tesla Model S. So we have one display up there that you can see on B-roll. You can't see it right now live. Uh, and that's where you'll have like your speedometer and other information and a little icon of the car that matches the car. Uh, like if I press the brake lights, the brake lights in the little icon come on. Very cool stuff. And then we have the main attraction. This is a 17 inch vertical screen, uh, which serves as the, the main console, I guess you would call it. And you can have a lot of different functionality here. You can see I have two apps open right now. Uh, we have the like internet browser on top and then some Google Maps on the bottom with uh, the satellite view so you can see where you are. And you can switch these around or you could turn one into full screen. Let me unswitch those. Or you could turn one into full screen if you want to, you know, watch MS Tech or something or then put it back into non full screen. If you want to get something else there, you can just take the music, drag it right there and then the music will come up. And one thing that I want to mention with this is that it actually has built in 
in LTE. So uh, Tesla actually pays for that LTE and that's how this is connected and gets data. So you can't connect your phone to it, but this unit itself basically serves as a giant tablet with its own LTE network. So you can get all the information and streaming music and stuff like that right there. Uh, but it won't actually play videos. And I, I wanna include that because that's smart. You know, if you loaded up a YouTube video, it's not safe driving to be watching a YouTube video while driving. So you can load up web pages and get basic stuff on there, but no videos because, you know, safety. Another thing that I find really cool is you know, there are a lot of cars with adjustable steering wheels that you can just have some basic adjustments with, but this steering wheel is fully electronically adjustable. So there's a little handle over here and you can have it come closer to you. You can have it go down or up. You can really get it comfortable for yourself. And that brings us over here again. So there's a lot of information and a lot of settings and a lot of stuff you can control. There's a few things I'm going to highlight, but there's just no way uh, I can practically cover everything that it has to offer. So I'm just going to go over a few things. You have driver profiles, so it has all the information you need per your driver, so like the settings you use and uh, that kind of stuff is saved per driver, so you can just click who you are and it will automatically adjust to the settings that you use. And then this is like the main controls and settings area. There's so much stuff within this, uh, I guess, application within the console. Uh, the example I'm going to show is the sunroof. If you want to open the sunroof, you just drag the sunroof down and it will start opening and then you can click stop, you can close it. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. The cool thing is also that like you can see the car in here on the screen is blue because this car is blue the same way the icon on this display is blue. It's just the little things like that that really add up to like a really solid experience with this car. You still have a charging screen that shows you your charging information. You can set it to charge at certain times, set it to charge to a certain amount, a lot of cool stuff like that. And you even have bioweapon defense mode, uh, which you can click there and there's a huge air as you can oh, see it, it turns on the car it pressurized the car it just pressurized the car so there's this huge hepa filter uh in there that's why the the new front trunks are smaller than the old version of the model s because they have that huge air filter and that's going to be really great in cities with a lot of pollution it'll keep you nice and healthy make sure the air you're breathing is healthy that's just you know elon musk being elon musk and doing crazy things there's a lot more information and settings and stuff that you can control in there. No way I'm gonna to touch on it all, but those were some of the coolest parts. All right, so this is what full acceleration looks like in the 75D. That's just absurd. You know, it's not, in the, it's not the 100D where it's 2.2 seconds, it's like four or five seconds, but still, the amount of power that the, the battery generates is just the torque and everything, it's absolutely insane. All right, so we checked out most of the tech within uh, the Model S throughout this video, and obviously it's loaded with tech, but I want to talk about a little bit about its driving style and kind of how it drives, because it really doesn't drive like a regular car, because, you know, you have an accelerator instead of a gas pedal, and uh, obviously you have regenerative braking as well, so when you're not using the accelerator, it's charging the battery with the brakes, so you don't even always need to use the brakes themselves, because the regenerative braking slows the car down anyway, and it's just a really smooth, and quiet ride. Honestly, driving it, this is one of the best driving experiences I've had. It's really, really an incredible experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the Tesla Model S. I'll be getting a Tesla Model 3 in uh, probably eight or nine months or so. Look forward to that. There'll be plenty of content on it. And uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more content. And as always, stay classy.